हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी विल बी गोइंग टू डिस्कस मेन प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ इनहेल्ड एनेस्थेटिक्स ओके जस्ट मेन प्रॉपर्टीज नाउ लेट्स एज्यूम दिस इज अ ब्लड वेसल एंड दिस इज अ टिश्यू ओके और अ सेल नाउ द सोल्यूबिलिटी ऑफ एनेस्थेटिक इन द ब्लड ओके द सोल्यूबिलिटी ऑफ द एनेस्थेटिक इन द ब्लड विल डिटरमाइन द रेट ऑफ इंडक्शन ऑफ इट्स ऑफ इट्स एक्शन ओके सी इफ द ड्रग इज मोर सोल्यूबल इन द ब्लड ओके देन इट विल रिमेन इन द ब्लड it will not go quickly into the cell okay so the onset of action of that anesthetic will be slow and if it is less soluble in the blood then it will quickly go into the cell okay it will leave the blood vessel and the onset of action will be fast so if there is increased blood solubility okay then the onset of action will be slow and if there is decreased blood solubility okay then the onset of action will be fast okay now the solubility of inhaled anesthetic in lipid determines the potency okay what do i mean by that see potency means either the anesthetic is strong or the anesthetic is mild is determined by its solubility in the lipid if the anesthetic is more lipid soluble okay then it will quickly cross the cell membranes okay it will quickly cross the cell membranes because the cell membrane contains lipid so if it is lipid soluble it will quickly cross the cell membranes and it will enter the cell and produce its its effect so if it is lipid soluble highly lipid soluble okay then it will be a very strong anesthetic okay and if it is less lipid soluble then it will be a mild one that's what we mean by potency now potency is inversely proportional to minimal minimal alveolar concentration so what is minimal alveolar concentration see it is the concentration of anesthetic in alveoli that is required to means see it is the it is the concentration it is the concentration of anesthetic which is required to produce its effect in 50% of patient okay 50% of patient will not respond to any painful stimulus that is what we say minimal alveolar concentration and why is it inversely proportional to potency c if let's say a, uh, the con minimal alveolar concentration of one drug is 3 mg okay obviously this is a fake unit just for your understanding purpose that is uh, let's say it is drug a okay drug a now drug a produce its effect in 50% of patient at a concentration of 3 mg now let's say another drug is drug b if the drug b wants to produce its effect in 50% of patient it requires let's say concentration of 20 mg okay so which which drug is more potent i think drug a is more potent even with a very small concentration it is producing the same effect okay that's why drug a is more potent that's why we say that if the drug has less mac minimal alveolar concentration then the potency will be high and if the drug has high mac then the potency will be low that's why both are inversely proportional to each other now next main property is arteriovenous concentration gradient and what is arteriovenous concentration gradient see arteriovenous concentration gradient is difference between concentration of anesthetic drug in artery and vein okay so let's try to understand see this orange part here is artery the green one here is capillary this is vein and this is tissue okay let's say the concentration of the anesthetic in the arterial side is 100 mg again the fake units okay but doesn't matter it's just for understanding see it's 100 mg okay now when it enters the capillary it will be taken up by the tissue okay now let's say after take uh, the tissue is taking up the anesthetic from the artery or the capillary uh, let's say 20 mg is left in the vein okay so what will be the arteriovenous concentration gradient here it will be 100 minus 20 that is 80 okay now let's say this drug a again okay now in another drug let's say this concentration of the drug in the artery is 100 mg let's say it is drug b okay now again the drug will be taken up by the peripheral tissue these are peripheral tissue okay peripheral tissue see if it it will be taken up by the peripheral tissue now when we measure the concentration of drug b in the vein let's say it is 80 
What does it mean? It means that peripheral tissue is not taking too much drug from the capillary. In first case, the peripheral tissue was taking a lot of drug. That's why in venous on venous side, its concentration was low. Here, let's say the concentration remains 80. So what will be the uh, arteriovenous concentration, concentration gradient here? It will be 100 minus 80 is equal to 20. So in drug A, the concentration grade, the arteriovenous concentration gradient is high, while for drug B, it is low. So what does this mean? Okay, what, what should we derive from this? Let's try to understand. See, in this case, the concentration of the drug in blood remains low, while in second case, the drug remains confined to the blood vessel. See, it is not entering the peripheral tissue very quickly. So here, the concentration is high. It means in this case the blood will not saturate quickly okay the blood saturation will be less in this case because the drug is not remaining in the blood vessel it is entering the peripheral tissue in the second case what will happen the blood saturation will occur very quickly okay rapidly now the main confusing point for all the student is that in this case drug A the onset of action will be slow slow onset of action okay and in this second case the onset of action will be fast fast onset of action that is the action will occur very quickly why is it so see try to understand one thing in this case the drug a lot of drug is entering peripheral tissue see a lot of drug is entering the peripheral tissue that's why less drug is available for the brain that's the main deal see again a lot of drug is entering the fat and other peripheral tissue in our body so very less drug is available for the brain that's why the onset of action is slow okay and in this case see the peripheral tissue are not taking up a lot of anesthetic from the blood that's why more drug is reaching the brain Okay, and more, more drug is reaching the brain, so that's why the onset of action is quick in this case. So that's the main thing that you should understand that why in drug A it's slow onset of action and why here it is fast onset of action. Now, uh, also, also see, here the, uh, just a second, sorry. Here, here in this case the saturation is less, okay. It means the blood is having less drug so that's why brain will get less less drug and again the onset of action will be slow and in second case it is exactly opposite now let's discuss about the third case sorry the third property see third property is blood gas coefficient okay w what does it simply mean see blood if the blood gas coefficient is higher it means the bl drug is more soluble in blood Okay, if the blood gas coefficient is low, it means the drug is less soluble in the blood. So if see, if there is increased blood, blood gas coefficient, it means there is high solubility in the blood. Okay, and as we discussed that if, if the drug is very highly soluble in the blood, okay, then the onset of action will be slow. So if there is increased blood gas coefficient, there will be high solubility in the blood and the onset of action will be slow. So that's the main thing. Now, another point to remember is that if the blood gas coefficient is higher, okay, that is if the drug is more soluble in the blood, the partial pressure will rise slowly. Again, this is another confusing thing for everyone. So let's try to take an example and try to understand by it. The example is not exactly the same analogy, but it will help you to remember for the examination. Okay, let's say there is a tank, okay, a tank which is filled with water. And there is another tank which is also filled with water. Let's say both the tanks are closed. Now let's add sugar in first tank. Sugar in first tank. Okay. What will happen? The sugar will simply get dissolved in the water. Okay. It is not going to in, uh, affect any kind of pressure in this tank. It will just get dissolved in the, in the water. Now in the second case, second tank, let's say we are adding stone. What will happen if we add, add the same amount of stone as, as the su sugar? Let's say we are adding stones here, okay? What will happen? The water level will rise, okay? And obviously the pressure in the tank will increase. So what do I mean by that? See, if, if, a, if the anesthetic is soluble in the blood, okay? The pressure 
will not rise means it will not rise very quickly okay while if it is insoluble in the blood insoluble in the blood okay then the pressure will increase very rapidly see you can remember it by sugar and stone example so see if it is insoluble in the blood then the blood gas coefficient will be low and if there is less blood gas coefficient then the pressure will rise quickly but if it is soluble in the blood then the blood gas coefficient will be higher and the pressure will not rise very quickly see the rise of pressure is slow so that is the main thing that you need to know for blood gas coefficient and arteriovenous concentration gradient now i have summarized all of the these things in the end okay see remember all, all this thing if blood solubility mainly affects the rate of indu induction okay it mainly affects rate of induction lipid solubility mainly affects potency av gradient mainly affects rate of induction partial pressure mainly affects potency okay this we, we didn't discuss so i am underlining it and blood gas coefficient mainly affects rate of induction because the solubility of of the drug in the blood determines the how means how quickly the blood will work so in case if you don't have time to go through all the lecture or uh, means you you don't have time to read everything then just remember these five points okay that will be very very helpful for the examination